try to apply uh, to this game what, what Stanford did. Is there, is there much, anything comparable that you can try to do to disrupt Barkley and to, right. just to get him out of his comfort zone? Well, you know, you go from playing um, two different styles of offense where in Ohio State you're trying to deal with a, a running quarterback that can, you know, break containment, get out of the pocket, yeah. uh, you know, run the football, throw it effectively. So it's a whole different dimension. So. Uh, than, than the style of offense that right, USC right. has. So, um, you know, we're going to do what we do and and run the, the scheme that we have. And, uh, you know, Stanford does what they do and everybody does what they feel like they can yeah. against their opponent. Is there a chance maybe you'd be a little more aggressive, whereas against a running quarterback you kind of have to hedge your bets a little bit? Well, they're very talented. I mean, they, uh, they're they very well coached. Uh, they got skilled players um, at every single position offensively. And, of course, the quarterback. Uh, does a great job of delivering the football. So um, you just have to understand that, that uh, you know, sometimes when you are pressuring, it is, you have, they have the opportunity to make a big play on you. Safe to say, though, that you can't leave your corners out there on an island against those two wideouts without some pressure on the quarterback. They're very talented. You've got to be able to, to change it up and give the quarterback different looks, and, and the cornerbacks are going to have to cover. I mean, you can't just cover them up every play because they have – uh, the ability to run the football, their their line uh, it works well together. They are extremely well coached, and they got backs that run really hard. So, you know, they they're uh, kind of a two-headed monster. You expecting their main center back in the? Uh, I don't know. We have to wait and see what happens in warm-ups, and and we'll go from there. You're uh, get Jaleel back this week. Mustafa hopefully will be uh, close to 100%. We'll see how he is, uh, you know, in the next couple days, but. We're anxious to get him back out there. Yeah, and do you, you feel with your front seven people, including the outside backers or even inside, that you can put sufficient pressure on, on Barkley? Well, they do a great job of getting the ball out of the quarterback's hands quickly, and they're very good in their protection. You know, the tackles protect well, and the tight ends block well when they stay in, and so do the running backs. So, um, you know, we're going to have our work cut out for us trying to get pressure on him. Have you ever seen Barkley look as Sort of disheveled as he did the other day. That's not very. I mean, right. he was off his game a little bit, which isn't. Yes, you know, Stanford did. Stanford did a, had a great game plan, and they got at, they uh, played really hard, and the guys executed their plan. But he made some throws in that game. He's a very competitive, talented player that that I'm sure is going to bounce back and and have a good rest of the season. What has Nick Forbes brought to the defense these last couple of weeks? Nick's an extremely good athlete. He's very explosive. He brings speed to the defense. He's the kind of guy that we want to continue to develop and try to get him in there as an every down player. He's a very conscientious kid. We just it, it, are kind of working him into all the packages because it's a little bit of an overload for him uh, until he plays more, but he's fully capable. So I think as we play games, you'll continue to see him play more and more. What prompted the decision to move him into the starting lineup last weekend? Well, a lot of it had to do with the speed that they had on the field in Ohio State. And obviously, we're going to put our best 11 guys out there every week that we feel like is going to give us the best opportunity to win. And last week, we felt like he was a guy that we wanted to have on the field because of his ability to run. And I think as, as we continue to go through the rest of the schedule, there'll be more and more games where we'll need to get him on the field more. Are you like um, Scarlett's ability to uh, rush the passer? That, that's it's been good. Uh, you know, the. The two out of the first three games have been kind of hard in terms of rushing the passer because the style of offense and the style of quarterback. Um, when you when you play Nevada and they run the pistol type scheme, there's the the drop back is not very often, uh, so there's more elements to the quarterback running the football. And against Southern Utah, he was he was able to rush because it was more of a pro style type type team. Then. Last week against Ohio State, we wanted to keep that quarterback in the pocket. So, um, you know, the ability to have him come off the edge and rush freely wasn't very often in these first three yeah. games. But this week, uh, you know, in some situations, I hope that we can uh, get a good pass rush out of him because he definitely has the ability to do that. He did it in high school, and I like what I've seen so far in fall camp in the rush drills. Thank you, Coach. Else? Thank right. you. See you all later. Yep. Thanks. Thanks.